Hi everyone, it's me again. I say me again because I'm sure that one of the things that many of you are missing about church life in these strange times is the ability simply to be in the same space, in the same room as other members of your church family and just to physically enjoy one another's company. So as a, as a slight variation on just my mugshot being up on the screen welcoming you this morning, uh, we, we've got a little montage of some, some other rogues who can just say hello to you and remind you that actually our church family is out there and we're, we're still looking out for one another. So here you go. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Morning, St. John's. Just sending you lots of love. Hi. Hi. Hello. David and Anne here. We're missing you all. Looking forward to when we can all meet again. Hi everybody! Hello! Missing you all! <laughs> Hi everyone! Hello everyone! Hi from Hi everyone. Hello! Hi everybody at St John's, a greeting from Lorraine here in Germany. Hope you have a great day. Hello! Hello! Miss you! Good morning St John's family! Um, have a blessed day today. Look forward to catching up with some of you on Zoom for coffee after the service. Before we dive into some sung worship with, with Dan, Dan who's going to be leading our music this morning, it, it feels right just to, to put the brakes on for a moment and just acknowledge um, that for some of you I'm aware that this week has been quite tumultuous. You've been facing some significant health challenges and those are ongoing. You set that within the, the context of looking slightly further afield to some of the world news and the, the ongoing rumblings in the US and, and everything that attaches to that. Uh, and not least of all, just the, the, the background noise of COVID-19 that can all weigh quite heavily on us. Um, but it, it feels appropriate, particularly when you think about the, the stuff related to George Floyd, um, just to actually bring that before God in confession and acknowledge the ways in which we have been complicit around matters of race. I hope that, that a number of you had the opportunity to reflect on some of those thoughts that I put out on Friday in relation to the George Floyd incident. And I just want to say, you know, those are, they are not straightforward um, and, and it's difficult to know how to respond. But a good starting point is just to come before God um, and acknowledge our part, whether we've wittingly or unwittingly um, been a part of a process that is less than fair. Um, Amber, in her prayers this morning, is also going to dedicate a bit of time specifically to, to praying into that situation. Um, and, it, and it feels right and appropriate to do that. But I just invite you to be still. This confession is, is wider than that, but it is deliberately focusing on that as well. When you simply think about that incredible summary charge that Jesus gives us. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. The reality is that both close to home and in a bigger macro sense, uh, we flunk it. We, we, we don't always achieve that. Uh, and we need God's help by the power of his spirit to, to live those sort of lives. So just be still for a moment. Think about that charge of loving um, and just hold before God those moments which you, you're acutely aware of where you know you haven't been the loving person that you want to be but also allow, I guess, his spotlight, his searchlight, the light of his spirit to examine your heart where actually you've been blind to stuff um, and you know you've been part of perhaps a, a bigger system that is, is not a loving expression of his kingdom. So let's just be still. Close your eyes if that's going to help. I'm aware that being still isn't possible for many of you um, because you've got kids hanging off you or whatever it might be, but if if at all you're able to just just be still just draw your attention to these words from Micah he has told you O mortal what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Father, we know that walking humbly with you is partly bound up in, in coming before you and 
acknowledging our frailty, acknowledging our weakness. Just being able to say sorry and seek forgiveness. So we hold before you those things which we are aware of where we we haven't been the loving people that you've called us to be. But we also want to bring before you the more subtle things where we've been apathetic, where we've been complicit in a in a system that is not fair, that does not treat people equally, that discriminates in many ways. And we thank you for your spirit. We thank you that your spirit can provoke us and can challenge us and bring about change in us. And so as we seek your forgiveness, we ask that you also empower us to be people who seek justice, who love mercy and who walk humbly with you. Amen. Just to give you a bit of a heads up so you're not sort of caught off guard who's doing what. As I've already said, Dan is going to be leading our sung worship. Richard, Richard Ford is going to come and speak to us. He's giving a short talk on a slightly Pentecostal theme, building a little bit on um, what we looked at last week, thinking about love and Pentecost and how those two dovetail together. So he'll be taking us into John's Gospel. And then Amber's going to be leading our prayers. There'll also be um, some time where we, we share bread and wine, so uh, you can either get that ready now or, or wait till the time comes and do it then. But let, let's, let's join together in some sung worship. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our living room. Uh, I hope you're well. It's been a bit of a challenging week in the news and uh, personal circumstances for some of us, but we can worship God in the midst of it. We don't have to just pretend none of it's happened and come and put on a best face. We can worship God in the midst of all the troubles um, and in the midst of it, and we can lift his name higher because he is worthy of all our praise. So join us in worship this morning. Don't just watch us. Uh, this isn't some weird TV show that you watch each Sunday. This is worship and this is what church has to look like at the moment. So, yeah, I encourage you join in, sing along, uh, stand up, sit down, lift your hands, don't lift your hands, do whatever you do to worship. Um, but we're going to sing together now. Oh 
Oh, 
that we had before the service uh, and if I did it was so nice seeing you and if I didn't oh sad times I missed you and <laughs> um, today in the service we have got Jack is about to do the reading and then we've got Richard who's going to talk to us about the reading so what have you you have been sent is a sheet with sermon notes at the top and what you can do on here is you can draw the preacher so that's Richard you can draw a picture of him there you can write down your favorite song if you want to and you can write down actually anything that you heard in the talk that you learnt about and see if afterwards, when you've written that, if you can tell the adults at home what you learnt. And I'm sure they'll be very impressed. And then you've got a space to write the Bible verse, which Jack is about to read. So get your pens ready so you can write that. And then you've also got a space to write your own prayer. At the bottom, I've added a box that says, how many times do you hear the Holy Spirit? So every time you hear holy spirit said you can draw a little line and if you've got siblings at home you can compare how many holy spirit you heard and if you don't then we'll talk about it on tuesday anyway so you make sure you listen out for when it says holy spirit in the sermon that richard's about to talk to us about so i look forward to seeing that on tuesday if you want to you can show it to us in the coffee catch up after the service as well enjoy bye Today's reading is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Last Sunday, the church celebrated Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And during my Zoom facilitated home group the next day, one of the members commented that although we pray to God and we pray to Jesus, we don't pray to the Holy Spirit, and asked why that was. The simple answer would have been to quote the words which in the Anglican Church are sometimes used to introduce the intercessions. Let us pray to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what one of the members did. But a statement like that needs a little bit of unpacking particularly on Trinity Sunday. We pray to God the Father because that's what Jesus himself did. We're told in the Gospels that Jesus went up into the hills to pray. And also, of course, we have the pattern of prayer which Jesus gave to his disciples, what we know as the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. But Jesus told us in John's Gospel that no one comes to the Father except through him. And if we ask anything in his name, Jesus will do it. So we can pray both to God in Jesus' name and to Jesus himself. And of course, we can also pray directly to God. And both God and Jesus are involved in granting our prayers. But the role of the Holy Spirit in prayer is somewhat different. The Holy Spirit, when we pray, 
is at work in us, directing our prayer, helping us know what to pray for and helping us to put those prayers into words. And when we can't find words, or when the words are inadequate, or we don't know how to pray as we ought, St Paul tells us that the very Spirit intervenes with sighs too deep for words. So on Trinity Sunday, it's good to remind ourselves that all three persons of the Holy Trinity are involved in our prayer life. Trinity Sunday is one of the Sundays that vicars are often tempted to farm out to others to preach on because of the complexity of the subject. Although I'm sure that's not why John asked me to preach today. He asked me to follow up on Pentecost. But before I return to that, let me share with you something that helped me to understand a little bit better what is meant when the church talks about God being three persons, but one God. Sometimes this is expressed as the three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, being of one substance or essence. You begin to see why clergy find it a difficult subject to preach on and why they're desperate to find some kind of image to provide an explanation. Clover leaves are quite common. One leaf made up of three leaves. My personal preference is one that appeals to science teachers. The chemical compound H2O. It comes in three forms, ice, water and steam. But the chemical formula for all three is H2O. As an explanation, it's a definite improvement on clover leaves. But back to Pentecost. Another question I was asked by my home group was, was the Holy Spirit there from the beginning? Behind the question was the fact that we, we talk about Pentecost as the coming of the Holy Spirit, as though that were the first appearance of the Holy Spirit. But a quick glance through the Gospels shows us that that is far from true. Mary is told by an angel that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will give birth to God's Son. When his earthly parents take the child Jesus to the temple, we're told that it has been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's anointed. At Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit descends on him like a dove and shortly afterwards, the Spirit sent Jesus into the wilderness where he is tempted. And I could go on, but time prevents. But what about the Old Testament? We're told in Genesis that before God began his work of creation, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. It was the Holy Spirit that inspired some of the Old Testament heroes, such as Gideon, of whom it is written, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and similarly of Samson, and David, who claimed, The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me, his word was on my tongue. But unsurprisingly, it's in the prophets that we find the Holy Spirit most at work. So Isaiah claims in one of his familiar prophecies, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he's anointed me. He sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken-hearted. So Pentecost is by no means the first appearance of the Holy Spirit. But what makes it different, and so very special, is that it's the first time that the Holy Spirit comes with power on a group of people, such as Jesus' disciples, rather than individual heroes or prophets and gives them the inspiration to start the process of taking the gospel to all corners of the world. That's what makes Pentecost so exciting. It's literally the birthday of the church. Peter concludes his first sermon preached in the power of the Spirit with the words, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. By making this call to repentance, P 
Peter is putting into practice what appears to be Jesus' rather challenging statement at the end of our reading this morning. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. What a responsibility that is. Jesus is giving to his disciples not only the responsibility for forgiving sins, but it would appear also responsibility for refusing forgiveness. But maybe it's not quite as straightforward as that. Before we can have our sins forgiven, we need to know that we've sinned and that forgiveness is available. And that's what Peter is doing in his Pentecost sermon. He's making the crowd aware of their sins, offering them the opportunity to repent and so extending forgiveness to them. Because if there's one thing that's a cast iron certainty in the New Testament, it is that God is waiting eagerly to forgive us our wrongdoings and to welcome us into his kingdom. That is what the parable of the lost or prodigal son is all about. It's what the parable of the lost sheep reveals. I tell you, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over the one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who do not need to repent. The world needs to be made aware of the destructive power of sin, but that through repentance, forgiveness is possible, and that through the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives can be transformed. But what about the second part of Jesus' statement? If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. One way of understanding this is to ask what would have happened if Peter hadn't addressed the crowd in the way he did. Those present wouldn't have been made aware of their sin, wouldn't have known about forgiveness, and so they would have remained in a state of sin. Likewise, any who heard what Peter said but didn't seek forgiveness. It is in this way that their sins are retained. As followers of Jesus, we all have a part to play in making those who have yet to know him aware of the forgiveness that he offers them. It's one of the ways in which we can extend to them the love which John was talking about last week. But what else does this reading this morning have to say to us here in West Wickham on June the 7th, 2020? Although in our reading from John, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit into his disciples on that first Easter evening, they don't receive the full power of the Holy Spirit until it comes in the wind and fire of Pentecost some weeks later. Having been told by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem until, Luke tells us in his Gospel, they have been clothed with power from on high. In other words, the Holy Spirit. Like the disciples on that first Whit Sunday, we too are waiting, not only for the end of lockdown, but also, I would suggest, for a fresh invigoration from the Holy Spirit so that we can play our part in spreading the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus, of the love and forgiveness that he extends to us. And if we are to do that, we must also remember that all that happened at that first Pentecost is a means to an end, not the end itself. In the same way that the Holy Spirit was given not to make the disciples more spiritual, more at peace with themselves, but to put fire in their belly, so that they would bear witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and, ten, and to the ends of the earth. So, if we allow it, the Holy Spirit will enable us to get on with our God-given task of living and spreading the good news of what God has done for us, and what he wants of us, to West Wickham, Beckenham, Bromley and Kent, offering people the opportunity to hear and learn more about the faith, which means so much to us. So excited were those first disciples of what was happening to them, that Pentecost. 
the passers-by wondered if they were drunk. Wouldn't it be great if we were so excited about our faith and so energetic in living it out that those we met wondered what it was that we had got and wanted some of it too? Amen. Deep Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch's treasure How great the pain of searing love the Father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory oh, 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 oh. gracious and you are loving and you are kind. You are our God, you are our friend and you are our saviour. Thank you Father. Thank you for sending us your Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit that you came to guide and lead us. Thank you Holy Spirit for moving amongst us in our lives. We welcome you Holy Spirit. We need your guidance and your wisdom and your power. We welcome you. Jesus, in the storm that we find ourselves in, God, we fix, we choose to fix our eyes on you. To quote the lyrics from United Pursuit, Lord, I've come to tell you I love you. I need you and there's no better place to be than in your love. I'm sorry for running in circles, for placing the focus on the waves and not on your face. 
you are the only one who brings me peace. Lord, in our own personal situations, we bring to mind anything or anyone we are feeling anxious about. Holy Spirit, come and give us insight and wisdom. Holy Spirit, move powerfully in these situations. You are the only one who brings peace. God, we choose to stop running in circles. We choose to stop focusing on the waves and the storm. We choose to focus on your face. Lord, in this time now, we want to lift up the racial injustice that is a global issue right now. God, I am sorry for my own naivety. You call us to lament, Father. Our hearts are broken for George Floyd. Our hearts are broken for his family, for his church. Our hearts are broken for our black friends and our black brothers and sisters who face racial injustice every day all over the world and in the UK today. As we play this song by Common Hymnal, let's sit and lift up all those who are suffering and facing racial injustice. We cry, let's cry out to God for change. to think of my little boys with dark hair and dark skin how to tell them that they're not safe in the streets where do i begin to say justice is blind he's a short-sighted lie I'm calling for change to the injustice standing by. I'm calling for change, begging that we will set this right, that we won't lose more innocent lives.
protect those innocent lives. God, we long for change. We are calling for change. Heavenly Father, you are gracious and you are loving and you are kind. You are our God, you are our friend and you are our saviour. Thank you, Father. Thank you for sending us your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came to guide and lead us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving amongst us in our lives. This week, God, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to share bread and wine now remotely, of course. Um, so if you want to grab whatever you need to be able to engage in communion wherever you're at, um, and then we will share some words of prayer, or words that remind us of everything that Jesus went through to secure our freedom, to secure life for us. So let's pray together. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And we join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So brothers and sisters, wherever you are right now, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Let's join together in expressing our gratitude to God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Hi everyone, so for um, our last song today, we're going to teach you actually a new one, and then we'll sing a chorus of one that you know, but um, yeah, we want to teach you a new one, which we do from time to time at church, and 
it's one that's been really close to our hearts for a number of years. Um, and this week it just came really sharply into view again as a, just a, a really timely song. Of one just asking for God to come and bring his supernatural love into our lives, into this world. And when the world seems to be shaking, it's something that we can hold on to. Um, so it's called God of Miracles. Um, we'll probably post it on the group chat and stuff afterwards as well. Um, but yeah, it goes a bit like this. Sing along if you know it. If you don't, just you can worship by listening. That's fine. Champion's not dead, he is alive. He already knows my every need. Surely he will come and rescue me. God of miracles, come.
that brings another one of our services to a close. Um, as we've been doing in the past couple of weeks, there's the opportunity to jump on Zoom now and enjoy a bit of an informal chin wag over a coffee and a biscuit. Uh, if you haven't yet done that, I'd really encourage you to do it. It works surprisingly well and it's been really good actually at connecting people who might not have been quite so familiar with each other in church and just people getting to know each other better. Um, and like I said, it just continues to help build those bonds of friendship um, within our church family. So, so do take the opportunity. But let me let me close, let me finish up by, uh, by a, just a prayer, a prayer of peace and, and a blessing. These are the words that we often share at the end of communion, actually. So again, you, you may be familiar with it. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and all those you love and care for. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord.